Today, we're going to talk about tangent space, object space, world space, and view space. Let's get started. All right, in previous tutorials, you may have heard me talk about various spaces, tangent space, object space, world space, and view space. Well, today I'm going to explain what those are and how you can use them. Before we start, it's important to understand that this topic can go very deep mathematically. There's a significant amount of linear algebra and matrix multiplication. I, I know that most of you are artists and not engineers, and so I'm going to try to explain this stuff in a visual way and not get too deep into the math of it all, but there are a couple of key principles that you need to know in order to be able to create shaders. So that's what we're going to go over. First of all, all of the various spaces are defined by an origin point and consists of three directions. I've represented those here by the red, the green, and the blue arrows. So these represent the X and the Y and the Z directions of the space. Let's talk about world space first. I've represented that one by uh, this set of arrows here that's in the middle. Uh, this uh, set of red, green, and blue arrows is at the origin of the world, and that's represented by this uh, blue plane here. And what we can see is that uh, these vectors represent the directions of the world. So this is the X direction along this axis. This is the Y direction along that axis. And then this is the Z direction on the blue axis here. Now, this is 3ds Max, and so it is a Z up environment. Uh, and Unreal is also a Z-up environment, actually, to match 3ds Max. Um, and Unity is a Y-up environment. And so if we want to make this uh, match Unity, we would need to change our little diagram here so our Y-axis is pointing up. But we're just going to leave it like this for now. The thing to note about uh, world space is that uh, these axes don't change when we move around our model or when we move around our camera or when we rotate these objects. So uh, world space is constant regardless of what else is happening in the scene. So I can move, rotate, scale my models or my cameras and world state space stays the same. Object space is a little bit different. I have a my trusty teapot here and you can see that I've got just the same as my world space axes, I also have the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction for my teapot. And this represents object space. And you can see when I rotate my teapot around, that space goes with it. And it's the same with uh, moving the teapot. When I move the teapot around, the space is relative to the location and rotation of the teapot. So that's object space. And then I also have camera space. And camera space uh, starts at the origin of the camera or the location of the camera. And the Z axis of camera space looks through the lens of the camera toward uh, whatever it's looking at. And then the X and the Y of camera space are the horizontal and vertical axes that you see when you're looking through the camera. And so camera space moves around as the camera moves, but obviously it's it's not affected by uh, the objects or how they move. There is one more space in our scene here that I want to talk about, and that's tangent space. Now tangent space is a little bit harder to describe, but I have created a little uh, one more little red, green, and blue arrow guy here to try to explain uh, what tangent space is. So when we talk about uh, world space or object space, those have one pivot point. So there's the origin of the world, there's the pivot point of the object. Um, but with tangent space, we have a different uh, space basis or set of red, green, and blue arrows here for every single vertex on our model. You can see here this red, green, and blue ver uh, arrow set 
represents this one single vertex in this location, but actually each vertex has its own uh, set of red, green, and blue arrows. And what these are, are the normal, the binormal, and the tangent. And so we have our vertex normal here, our red arrow, and we have our green and blue arrows. And what those represent is the U and V of the UV coordinates on the surface. And so this surface or this space called tangent space is relative to the layout of the UVs on the surface of the model. It's most useful for things like normal mapping. And you've probably heard of the term tangent space normal map. Uh, well, that's because it's using uh, the, the U and the V of, of the UV coordinates and it's relative to the, the layout of the texture coordinates on the surface. So when you create a tangent space normal map, it's tied to uh, the UV coordinates and relative to the, the space of the layout of the UV coordinates on the surface of the model. All right, so we talked about our view space, we talked about our world space, we talked about our object space, and we also talked about our tangent space. Before we jump into Unity and Unreal 5, there's one more thing that I wanted to mention, and that is in order to perform math operations between vectors, it's important that both vectors of the operation be in the same space. So for example, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about dot products. And then last week we talked about input vectors, the camera vector, uh, normal vector, and light vector. And if we're doing math between these vectors, we need to make sure that the vectors are all in the same space. So whether that be world space or object space or tangent space. And so if we have a vector that's in one space and another vector that it's in another, we have to do something called a transformation. And that's some math that we're gonna perform on the vector in order to change it from one space to another. All right, let's jump into Unreal 5 and Unity and take a look at some examples. All right, in this first example that we're gonna take a look at, we're gonna build something called uh, spherical coordinates. And it's also uh, sometimes referred to as matte cap reflections. So what we're doing here is we start out with our vertex normal. And here you can see that Unreal is giving the vertex normal to us in world space. That's what this WS stands for. So if we take a look at our vertex normal in world space, you can see that I've got these yellow, green, blue colors going on. And what we're gonna do in order to, what we wanna do is we have this texture here that is uh, a sphere. And if we look at it here, uh, it's just a, kind of a sphere ball texture. And if you do a search uh, in Google images for matte cap textures, M-A-T-C-A-P, matte cap textures, you'll find all kinds of examples of these. Let's take a look. So like I said, here is our search for matte cap textures. And you can see there's all these different spherical textures. Uh, and what we need to do is make a shader that allows us to sample this texture and apply it to our surface. If we just plug it in like it is, you can see that it's using the UV coordinates on the surface and it's wrapped around, but it's not really behaving what we like what we want. We want it to look like a reflection basically and use the surface normals to look up into the parts of the, of the sphere here. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use our transform vector node. And just like I was saying before, we need to convert the surface normal of the model from world space into view space so that whatever the camera points at, the normals of the object that uh, is using this shader are going to be in view space of the camera. So here you can see we've got our transform vector node and down here I've set the source to world space because our normal is in world space. And then I've set the destination to view space. And so what this node is gonna do is it's gonna do some matrix multiplication. It's gonna multiply our vertex normal in world space uh, by the view space matrix and transform that into view space. So if we plug this in, now you can see that no matter where in the scene I rotate around, the colors are staying constant on my sphere here and that's because they're projected 
in the space of the camera because I've transformed from world space to view space. So now I can use these values as texture coordinates to look up my sphere texture. I need to adjust them just a little bit because they're just slightly off. Uh, for example, if I plug this in, well, <laughs> if I just plug it directly in, you can see that I get an error here. And that's because this is a VEC3 and for UVs, it wants a VEC2. So I need to add a channel mask. Here's a channel mask and I'll just plug this in. I'm just gonna take the red and the green channels and plug it in like that. Now you can see that I've got my sphere mask applied, um, but there are four of them instead of one. So I need to adjust these texture coordinates just a little bit. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna multiply it by 0.5 and negative 0.5. And the reason that I have that negative there is just to flip it vertically. Then I'm gonna add 0.5 and then I'm gonna mask, I'm gonna use a component mask to just uh, take the X and the Y coordinates, just like I did up here. Then I'm gonna plug that into my texture sample, and you can see that those adjustments that I made uh, were enough to uh, move the texture over just right, so that now uh, my sphere map is projected in view space. And so no matter how I rotate or turn the camera around, I'm always gonna get you know, this part of the texture applied to the top of the model, this part applied to the bottom and the sides. And so that's pretty cool, that's what I want. So let's switch over to this uh, really quick sample scene. And you can see that I have a rock here. And as I rotate around the rock, you can see that the, the texture is staying relative to the normals on the surface of the rock. So I'm getting this uh, kind of nice pink red glow around the edges and this light blue in the middle Just like in my texture here. So this is happening because My texture is being applied relative to the camera or it's being projected in view space uh, because I transformed uh, My normal from world space to view space. All right, so that's how you do a matte cap shader or also uh, could you could call it a a spherical projection. All right, let's take a look at another example. I'm just going to move these nodes out of the way. And my other example is down here. So let's take a look at this. And in this example, we're going to be transforming from object space, uh, world space, and also tangent space. So first, let me explain what's going on. I've got a texture here, uh, and this is just a rock texture. You can see down here it's called T Rock Slate D. This is one of the textures that comes with Unreal 5. And I'm going to plug that into my base color, and I'm just going to disconnect the emissive that I had going on here. So here you can see that I've got this nice slate rock texture. And what I want to be able to do is apply moss to the top of my model here. So I'm going to plug in my slate texture, oh, and also my slate normal map. I'm going to plug that into the normal slot. And you can see that now I've got a little bit more surface detail. Uh, you can see that the, the normal map gives some nice shape uh, to my object here. Okay, so now what I want to do is apply some moss to the top of my model. So here's my moss diffuse texture and my moss normal map. And if I plug those in, I'm just going to replace the slate with the the moss and that's not quite what i want i want the moss on the top and the or yeah sorry yeah, the moss on the top and the slate on the sides and the bottom so what i need to do is blend between the slate and the moss and that's what i'm doing with this lerp here so i'm going to plug that into base color then i need to blend between the slate normal and the moss normal. And I'm gonna do that with this lerp here. So I'll just plug that into normal. All right, so now we have a blend that's like 50, a 50-50 mix of slate and moss. What I really want is the moss to show up on the top. And we've done this in a couple of other videos, but uh, let's just repeat this. So here is my slate normal map. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's add our normal again. This is our vertex normal. It's in world space. 
and we only want the Z component of our vertex normal. So I'm just gonna plug this right into my component mask here, which is set to B, or my Z component. And then let's take a look at the mask that we get from the Z component of our world space normal. I'm just gonna plug this into base color for now so that you can see it. All right, so the Z component of our world space uh, vertex normal shows the top of my object. So now I can use this as my mask. I'm just gonna use that as my lerp mask and plug it in here and plug it in there. And then we'll plug our lerp mask into base color. And now that you can, now you see that the, the moss is applied to the top of our model and not to the bottom. But it doesn't really align with the shape of the object because I'm just using my vertex normal and I'm not really taking into account the shape that my normal map is giving me. In order to do that, I need to use this transform vector node again. And since my normal map is in tangent space, this time I need to transform from tangent space to world space. So if I want my normal map to replace what my vertex normal is doing, I need my normal map that's currently in tangent space to go to world space. So you can see I've taken my normal map sample and plugged it right into this transform vector. I set it to source tangent space destination world space. Then I saturate the result. And that's really important because if I don't clamp this, uh, the result that I'm getting at the bottom is negative one. And that's gonna really mess up the results of my lerp. So this saturate node clamps my results between zero and one. Then I'm gonna plug that into my cheap contrast node uh, just to adjust the results a little bit. And here you can see, I'm actually getting the results on the front or back of my model. And what I really want is to get them on the top. So I need to grab this mask here and plug that in. So let's put the mask in between our saturate and our cheap contrast. And now I'm getting the moss right on the top of my model. So I'm going, I'm taking the results of my normal map, transforming them to world space, and then taking just the Z component of the normal and uh, using this cheap contrast node to increase the contrast a little bit. Uh, just briefly, let me skip that cheap contrast and just do this and you can see that now I've got moss that's kind of transparent and it falls off softly. Uh, but that doesn't really do what Moss does. And so I've added this cheap contrast in here uh, just to kind of increase the contrast on the mask. All right, so that is an example of transforming to from tangent space to world space. And if we switch back to our scene here, now you can see that I've got my rock and it's got the Moss applied on the top. And if I rotate my object, because my moss is being applied in world space, the moss is always going to stay on the top. Like regardless of how I rotate this rock, this moss is always going to be applied to the top surfaces. You can see that as I rotate it around, the moss is moving so that it stays on the top. That's pretty cool. This is a neat feature. So I could randomly rotate these rocks all over the place and I'd always get moss on the top. So that works great if my rocks are static, but what if I want to animate my rocks? Then I'm gonna get this crazy ghost moss that appears like it's sliding around my rock as the rock is moving through the world. And so in that case, what I can do is I can use object space. So let's switch back to our example here. Here you can see that I'm transforming from tangent space to world space. But if I actually want the moss to stick to the surface instead of moving it around as I rotate my rock, instead of going to world space, I can transform it to, and in Unreal it's called local space instead of object space. So I can pick local space here. Now you can see it still looks the same here um, because I'm not actually rotating uh, this sample sphere here. But if I switch back over to my scene, you can see that now the moss is applied to the actual top of the rock. And if I rotate the rock, it's going to stay the same 
it's always going to be on the top portion of the rock. Um, even if I rotate the rock down like this, it's not going to change where the moss is applied. So it's always going to stay in that same location because it's relative to the pivot point of the object. It's in object space, or Unreal calls it local space, uh, instead of in world space like we had it before. Okay, so we talked about tangent space. We talked about view space with our sphere projected reflections, and we talked about object space and world space. Cool, so that does it for Unreal. Let's switch over to Unity. All right, so here we are in Unity with the same two examples. At this, For this example at the top, we have our normal vector, uh, our surface normals, and we've got those in world space. Then we've got Unity's equivalent of the transform vector node in Unreal, so it's called transform. And you can see that we're transforming from world to view space. And right now this type is set to position. Um, so Unity's version of this transform node can transform vectors or positions. And I've actually got this set to position, so I need to set it to direction instead because a normal is a direction. All right, then we multiply it by 0.5 and we add 0.5 to do the same adjustments that we did uh, in Unreal. And then we use the results as our UV coordinates for our texture. And we're using the same texture here as we did in Unreal. So if I open this up, I can plug our sphere map texture into the base color and also into the emissive. And we get our results. And it looks pretty cool. All right, let's save that. And we'll switch over to our scene and take a look. And you can see that I've got it applied to this render ball here. And if I rotate the render ball around, you can see the details of the render ball, the, the little logo there and the, uh, the little slices on the side are moving around. But my texture is not because it's applied in view space, just like we talked about. So I'm transforming the normals into view space and then using the view, view space to apply the texture. So I've got this cool matte cap effect going on where uh, it's kind of a it's, a, it's a cheap way of, of doing reflections. And it's not actually reflecting the scene, it's just using whatever is in that texture that I'm sampling. Um, but if you wanna do reflections really cheaply, you can use this technique uh, to sample a sphere map. If you wanted to do reflections on mobile, for example, you might consider using this technique. One, because the math isn't too expensive, and two, because it uses uh, such a small texture. All right, let's take a look at our second example. So for our second example, we have uh, this texture here, which is our, our rock texture. And I'll just plug that into our master stack over here. So you can see I've got the rock texture on um, my preview here. And I can also plug in the normal map to uh, the socket here, the, the normal and tangent space. So now I've got a nice rock texture, uh, but I wanna apply the moss on top of the rock. And so I've taken my normal map here and I've transformed it from tangent space to world space. And then I'm taking the Y, um, because again, remember that Unity is Y up, whereas Unreal is Z up. So I'm taking the Y because that's the up vector or the up component. Then I've got my contrast here, just like I did in Unreal. And I'm saturating it to make sure that I get rid of the negative values that are at the bottom. Now the resulting mask, if I plug that into base color, you can see that now I've got a mask on the top, so I can use this in my lerp node. So I'm using this mask and I'm blending between the rock texture and the moss texture. So let's plug that into base color. And I'm also blending between the rock normal map and the moss normal map. And we can plug that into normal. And there you go, there's our results. So no matter which way I rotate the sphere, that mossy texture is staying on the top 
and the rock material is staying on the bottom because of this mask that I've created. So I took the normal, transformed from tangent to world space. Uh, and again, I might want to change this from position to direction. I'll probably get just a little bit better result uh, doing a direction because these are normals, uh, not positions. All right, then I use the Y component, do the contrast, and then saturate the result. Let's take a look at our scene to see what we get. So now you can see, if I take a look at my render ball here, I've got my moss texture. <laughs> Actually, it's more of a, a grass material on top of my render ball and the rock or concrete material on the bottom. And I can rotate the ball around and the moss is always gonna stay on the top as I rotate it around and the rock is always gonna stay on the bottom. If I switch back to my material and instead of transforming to world space, I transform to object space. Now, if I take a look at my scene, I can rotate the ball around and the, the moss material is always gonna stay on top relative to the orientation of the ball, but I am able to rotate the ball around uh, if I turn it upside down, for example, now the now the moss is on the bottom. So as uh, I've set my mask to be an object space, if I rotate my object, the mask rotates with it. But in world space, the mask is going to stay on top no matter how I rotate the object. All right, so let's sum up a little bit. So today we talked about world space, object space, uh, tangent space, and also view space. And we took a look at two examples, uh, creating a mask that uh, goes on the top of our object and whether or not it stays on top of the object depends on if we're transforming our normals uh, into world space or object space. We also looked at a sphere map example where we're projecting our sphere map onto our object by transforming our normals into view space. So I hope those examples are useful to you and I hope you learned something in today's video. Uh, if you did and you liked the video, be sure to give it a like. I really appreciate that. And next week, we're gonna talk about controlling the range of the values uh, in a mask. So we're, we're gonna talk about saturate, min, max, and clamp. So be sure to come back next week uh, to check that out. And in the meantime, have a great week, everybody. Thanks a lot.